Hi, I'm Kathy Margolin. I'm uh, the Associate Dean of Business at Brandman University. We're in Southern California. We have 27 campuses in California and Washington State. Uh, and we have just launched our competency-based education program uh, in the direct assessment mode. I'd like to tell you a little bit about our competency-based education program. Uh, we started it two years ago and our university is looking to be the innovative leader in adult education. So we looked at what our future students would need. Our average student is about in the lower 30 year old, uh, usually a working adult. And to be able, we have, there are 37 million students out there with some college but no degree. Um, and there's been a push by Washington, the president, and also uh, Congress to make school more affordable um, and accessible and with quality in mind. There are a number of students with huge student loan. There's a lot of student loan debt, so they're trying to make it more affordable. Compsy-based education is one way to do this. Uh, again, two years ago, we looked at um, a different, this as a different degree program. We teach blended classes, we teach online classes, and we were looking for a different modality um, for a different subset of students. There are a lot of working adults out there that have um, a lot of working knowledge and are self-starters, and this would be a perfect program for them. We started and we decided to start with a Bachelor's of Business Administration with four emphasis areas. The emphasis areas are supply chain, marketing, management and leadership, and also information technology. As you'll find, a lot of uh, competency-based education programs also include information technology. That's one of the um, draws to that area for students. And we decided to look at, for say the marketing job, what marketing job would they come out with? We looked at a government database by the Department of Labor called the ONET database, which determined for that specific job, what are the knowledge, skills, and abilities are needed. We then um, worked those together for the different majors and worked those knowledge, skills, and abilities into competencies. We then added external certifications for each one of those majors and took the knowledge, skills, and abilities to that and added that to our pool to determine what competencies were needed. Uh, we ended up with, for a bachelor's degree, typically 55 to 60 competencies are needed to graduate. We are using a direct assessment method. Um, a uh, university like Western Governors is using uh, competency by credit, so each competency equates to a credit hour. Direct assessment determines that you can do it, the competency, and it doesn't necessarily tie to a credit hour. Uh, it's another different way of looking at it. But with a competency, a person would go through a competency, do work on some checks for understanding, and the item that counts the most is the uh, final value assessment. So the final value assessment, they have to pass at 80% uh, to be able to go on to the next competency. So uh, we worked with arts and sciences because we also have a general education component in it and also a bit then our business school worked on the business component. And, um, and it was interesting that both arts and sciences and business both schools worked together uh, on this project, uh, and we designed the competencies. Um, I think we had 13 general education competencies, and between the different emphasis areas, we had like 78 business competencies that we designed in a year. We used our existing faculty to design that. Uh, we used a vendor called Flat World Knowledge as the content, and they also developed the engine that we used to put it in. We, are, we have just received financial aid from our Department of Education, one of the first, uh, the fourth one in the nation to receive financial aid for direct assessment competencies. Now, as somebody goes through our competency program, they are able to bring in 
transfer credits and if they have a B minus or better on that class, they can transfer that in to equate to a competency. And as they go through the competencies, we have a number of them that have project or project based and the competencies, the final value assessment could be like a business plan for uh, your business capstone uh, competency uh, and they, uh, are, those are then graded by graders. We have a number of different levels of people interacting with you. As the student applies, they will take a competency information module which gives them a look to see if they are, would be a fit for the competency-based program. Uh, it helps them with learning how to use the library to make sure that they understand technology and that they would be a good fit for the program. That is a free program that we let everybody into to see if they're a good fit. Uh, and our competency-based program is $5,400 a year uh, in six-month increments. Uh, we designed the program so that there are eight six-month periods, basically four years, but you can go through at any speed. So we expect that an average student would get a bachelor's normally in the United States it would take four years or five years, I think is the average nowadays, in 30 to 36 months. So because they can go through the competencies, pass the final value assessment at 80% and go on to the next one. So I think it's a win-win for somebody who is a self-starter and interested in working at their own pace, whether they have a, a crazy job where they just don't have the time to attend class, it's not based on seat time. That's the difference with competency-based education. It is not based on seat time, it's actually based on what you learn and time is the variable. So that's one of the reasons why we felt it was a very good program to get started. Our institution wants to be the um, leader in adult education, in innovation in adult education. And we have a group called Institutional Research and they started surveying what are, what are the options out there? What, what, what is new coming down the pike? They looked at MOOCs and they said, well, that doesn't really bring students in. I mean, it brings students in, it's more marketing, but it's not for a whole program. How do we make a difference to our adult education audience? Um, and working with a chancellor and a provost, worked with our board of directors uh, to determine which way they wanted to go. Right? So we actually had support from the upper levels of management before they started this. Um, and then once they made that decision, they looked at all the different options, they decided to start the program, do some investigation, uh, talk to other people. They talked to people from Western Governors, they talked to consultants, they talked to other places that were starting to do it, uh, and got involved with the process. They then uh, started a program council, which I then became a part of, in addition to our deans of arts and sciences and business and faculty in both of those areas. You have a lot of different universities that are doing this. Um, we focused on quality. Uh, again, we did a backward design, so we pulled in the knowledge, skills, and abilities. Uh, to develop our competencies and from that we actually came up with objectives from those knowledge, skills, and abilities for each objective. And it was validated also by, uh, we took external certifications for those, for those emphasis areas like marketing and looked at the knowledge, skills, and abilities for those certifications and made sure that those were in the program. We then had it, uh, we ran it by our um, business advisory board to make sure that we had the right knowledge, skills, and abilities. So we had a number of external resources saying, okay, do we have the right competencies and objectives for those competencies? We then cross-referenced to our current courses. Are we doing anything new? Or, you know, is there something that we need to add? We found that in our current program, we didn't have risk management. We didn't have global economics. These we had gotten from external sources and are now in our competency-based education and eventually we rolled into our regular degree program. So we actually built a lot of quality into it by a number of different checks and balances. So we actually spent the entire last year developing competencies. So it was more of a kind of a year of planning 
uh, again, two years ago, most people were not doing it. Now, I'm seeing a lot of people here are doing it. There's, uh, I've heard over 350 colleges are considering it or doing it. Um, one of our um, vice chancellors joined the Compsy based Education Network, uh, which was formed by 20 institutions who were working on Compsy based to ensure the quality of the program. So that gives us an advantage because we actually have a sounding board now. We worked with a uh, provider, Flat World Knowledge, as a book publisher. Uh, we, at the time, two years ago, we went out to the various vendors. Uh, some were interested, some were not. Um, some have now gotten into the system, into developing compass-based education. Uh, one company, uh, Cengage, wasn't even interested. Now they're big into it. So the difference of two years is, is very interesting as how the publishers have really uh, jumped on the bandwagon. We pulled in um, text from Flat World Knowledge, again they're a book publisher, where we didn't have content, we actually either created it uh, or pulled in other online open sources information. We pulled in different YouTube videos, uh, interactive, everything was closed captioned so that it would work for all of our, um, um, we call it ADA compliant, uh, the American Disabilities Act compliance. So everything um, is all in an online, all the books are included, um, and it's all digital. So the first students will be using it on either an iPad or a computer. They'll upload their files to the platform that we have. It has a dashboard. As they go through the competencies, they'll be getting badges, digital badges, and that they can then post on to their Facebook account to say, oh, I've passed Accounting 101, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and as the student goes through, um, they'll interact weekly with a coach. Think of that as an advisor who help uh, make sure that they're on progress, on task, if they need any additional information. Um, we also have um, tutorial faculty who will be uh, helping them, but only if they need help. Okay. So we, those are more of a subject matter experts. We might have one for accounting, one for business, one for econ, and as the person, as a student would go through the competency, if they have any questions, they would reach out to the subject matter expert, which we call their tutoring faculty. As they have um, done their final assessment, that would be then graded by a grader, and the person's responsibility would be only to grade. So that's a different level of employee. Uh, we have two levels of assessment. Uh, we broke it down in terms of Bloom's taxonomy. Um, the lower level, we call level one, is an assessment that is more, um, more like a multiple choice where it's self-graded. Okay, forty percent of the of the competencies are in that level. Sixty percent are more project-based. Could be designing a business plan, a marketing plan, uh, a plan for working on a team, et cetera. But those are all put up online. Um, they're uploaded to the program, and then the graders would grade them. So you have project-based, and 60% of the program is based upon projects, whether it could be, um, again, designing a business plan or whatever. So, so you actually get the richness of the experience. Now, I think they're, they're looking at um, maybe one to two years because they're looking at a large number of students going through the program. Um, as we are in two states and we have a, a fair number of military population um, and we're pulling from a lot of different states, uh, we have the, ac the accessibility to a number of different students. That college may not have been available to before because of their schedule, um, you know, and they wouldn't want to sit in a class if they have a lot of knowledge, they want to have to sit in a class for 16 weeks just to get the transcript. So 
you have an entire new population that you're um, yeah. pulling into college. We expect it to grow exponentially. Right now we're in beta tests. Uh, we have um, a limited number of students that are going through every competency and make sure everything is all, you know, we say kicking the tires. Uh, and probably in January we'll be opening it to other people. And we have uh, just under a thousand, you know, anywhere from 600 to a thousand people are ready to go into the program. They've expressed interest in getting into it. We expect it to grow exponentially. Um, and the advantage to choosing a bachelor's is that you have a bigger population. So a competency based program is where you used your economies of scale. Uh, you spend a lot of money developing the program. You have to work on your back end systems. We had to work hard on, uh, we actually got a new financial aid system that will manage students going through and starting every week, not every semester. They can start in this program every week. So it's not, oh, I've got to wait for another semester to go. They can actually start at their own speed. And we call it the all you can eat buffet because you can go through the competencies as fast as you want. Major challenges, um, our faculty were on board. The problem is developing a competency is completely different than developing a class. And it took uh, a number of months for our faculty to grasp that concept. Uh, as you're starting anything new and that is transformational, um, there were different starts, you different deliverables, things changed. Oh no, now you deliver it this way because now they've developed a process. So developing our systems and our processes uh, for any transformational change, you work and then you change it a little bit because you didn't do it quite right and then you eventually come up with a good product. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was a transformational change project. Mm -hmm. So Demanding. yeah, and so uh, I actually was going through a transformational change educational doctorate program at the time. So it was actually right up my alley. Mm -hmm. It is um, because you've got to uh, have the subject matter experts develop the competencies. You've got to have some partnership with a publisher of some sort and to develop a platform. Um, as more, it becomes more mainstream, uh, those monetary requirements I think would be reduced because they're getting competent, uh, you know, scalability. Right. So some of the vendors that two years ago didn't even consider it, it's mainstream right now. You know, um, and so there's a lot more advantage to being a little bit slower to adapt because uh, the economies would be better.